Sean Allen here. I, uh, I did a, a video presentation last year about key performance indicators, uh, KPIs, specifically for martial arts schools, but it does apply to pretty well any business. And I've just had a few business owners contact me over the new year break to be able to get some clarification on how do they connect the key performance indicators, the numbers that their employees are responsible for, like how many phone calls they answer to make appointments, how many people come into their classes, and so on. And how do they connect those numbers to the numbers of overall business performance? So I've made a little presentation after uh, this intro, and I hope it helps and hopes it gives you, it gives you an ability to be able to, for your employees to see how they can make a difference on a daily basis to the overall performance of the business because joining those two together is the key to be able to keep an employee focused on the right, doing the right things, the things that will make a difference for the business in the long run and enjoy their job a bit more than just coming in and clocking off the hours, clocking on and clocking off. And let's face it, at the end of the day, that's probably one of the most important things we can do as a business owner is financially reward our employees and more importantly create a valuable service to our clients but also create an environment for our employees that makes them feel that they're actually making a real difference. So I hope you enjoy the presentation. As you can see I've written down the center of our screen the two aspects that we must make sure are in a, an alignment if we want to get the maximum results from 2013. Number one of course is the direction of the business and I'll bet that you won't have any problems with identifying the direction of the business. The, the things that you think you want to have improved. They might be uh, amount of money coming in through the front door, the number of students, the amount of times that the students come in on a regular basis, the ability of the reception staff or yourself to be able to book in intros, introductory lessons, the amount of stock that you sell. So all of those things are relatively easy to articulate and to measure. In a similar vein, the direction of an employee should be in a, a, a measurable system two so that we can ensure that they are both complementing each other. So we again need to be able to find out the direction of each particular employee so that it suits the business and of course those two should be obviously lifting up in an upwards direction but the problem is that if we have an employee who we find is in a different direction if they're not supporting the business we're probably going to find that if they are slightly sideways if their direction is in many ways different to the business it's pretty well apparent to the owner straight away that a change needs to be made so the first of the two methods that we uh, use to create measurable change in 2013 is to ensure that the direction of the employee, the goals of the employee, support the goals of the business. Now this is easier said than done because of two reasons. And the two reasons are one is easy and one is hard. So let me just scroll up a little bit. To give you an indication as what is easy to manage is a numerical method. For example, we mentioned earlier that within a business we always want to we want to be able to maximize profit or maximize total income. We even mentioned that we would like to see if we could get more students and identifying exactly how many more or how much more is relatively easy. The problem is that that's not the only reason we are in business and that's not the only reason that an employee works hard for us. There is other more difficult ways to be able to identify. So these two ways of easy and hard, and as you can see here I've put two examples, is the easy way, I'll just get rid of that, amazing, whoosh and it's gone. The numbers is the easy part to manage and to measure. The anecdotal method 
of whether or not a person is really enjoying running a business or working in a business is the hard part. The more I ask employers and employees about the reason why they're working there or they have the business in the first place is they quite happily talk about the numbers. They, they might say, oh, I work here because I get paid enough. Or the, the owner might say, I run the business because it's financially rewarding. So all that can be numbered down to an actual specific number. And if a business owner is happy with his martial arts school, he'll be able to say, it's because I have 250 members, 100 members, 400 members, 500 members. However, that's not the reason why an owner would continue to work in a business year after year. And it's not the only reason why an employee would continue to be loyal year after year. This hard section here, the anecdotal method, the warm fuzzy you get from working in an industry which makes you feel better as a person, that's the difficult thing to articulate, to identify. So that is the thing that we're going to concentrate on in our next session is how do we identify not only the numbers for a focus for an employer and an employee, but what are the other factors that also have to be dealt with so that an employer will feel like being in the business, but most importantly, so that an employee will give their heart and soul to the business. It's as if they owned the business themselves. So let's talk about that in the next section, but the main focus for you now is to be able to identify some of the numbers.